Hi, this is Susan Arango from Little Guy CGI, and today I'm going to show you how to make chain mail in Blender 2.79. So let's get started. If you're new to Blender, I recommend that you go up to File, User Preferences, Input, and change to left click. By default, it's set to right click, change it to left click, and then X out. So the elements that you're going to need to make this are the cube that's already there. Then we're going to hit Shift A and we're going to bring in a plane. You won't see it right away. You can move it down with this blue manipulator. And then you're going to hit scale and scale it up. Hit scale again if you need to, to about there. Shift D will copy that plane and then you bring that one up above. We're going to use that later on so we can just get it out of the way for now. The last thing we need to bring in is Shift A again, Mesh, and we're going to bring in a Taurus. Again, you can't see it. It comes in where the cursor is, so we'll just pull that to the side. Okay, now that we have all our elements, let's get everything set up properly. We're going to roll the middle mouse wheel back a little bit so we can see. Select the top plane. We're going to hit S and scale this down a little bit. We don't need it quite so big. Then we're going to come down here to Object Mode, change it to Edit Mode. And then we're going to click W on the keyboard and select Subdivide. As soon as you do that, look over here to your left. You'll see Number of Cuts. We're going to change that to 10. And that's the result that you should get. Come back down here to Edit Mode and change it back to Object Mode. Okay, we just made a quick change, something that we noticed. If you look up at the top, it now says Susan Arango earlier. It said Alimayo Arango, and yes, that is my husband, Alimayo Arango, who has his own YouTube channel with Blender. Some of you may know him, um, but we did change it to Susan Arango. We noticed it kind of late. So the next thing I want you to know um, before we get too deep into this is if you look over here to your left on your navigation tabs over here, under tools, if you scroll down, there's a tab that says tissue tools. We are not going to use that one. We're going to use the one under create. And if you scroll down, there's also a tab down here that says tissue as well. So it was very confusing in the beginning, a um, little difficult to find the second one. And it says tessellate. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video is the tessellate. And just know also that if you click that while you're in object mode and click tessellate, you'll get a certain set of controls and options. If you are in edit mode and click tessellate, you'll get a different set of controls and options. So it's very important to know which mode you're in before you click the tessellate. And remember, you want the one under the create tab, not the tissue tools under the tools tab. Okay, we're going to hit A to deselect a plane. Now we're going to hit A to select the torus first, then hit hold shift and click the plane because we want them both selected torus first, then the plane. We're going to go over here to tessellate. The default settings are fine except for scale. We're going to change that to 0 0.05. If you leave it um, higher than that, you get the result is a very wide torus and we don't want that. Um, everything else is fine here for right now. Click OK, and your result should be that your torus is now on the plane. So now what we're going to do is hit Shift D to duplicate our torus on the plane. And then you hit um, left click to lock it into place. We're going to go down to edit mode. And then we're going to move over two buttons and we're going to click these little two circles here and change it to individual orient origins. And then we're going to come up here, scroll in a little bit, roll your middle mouse wheel, hold shift down and move it because you need to see what's going to happen here. Then we're going to hit R, X to rotate on the X axis. And then you move your mouse wheel to get the correct positioning that way. Left click to lock it in. Then we're going to grab the red 
manipulator and pull it to the side hold your middle mouse wheel down and scroll it around and look and make sure that that's the result you want and what you want is the interlocking rings kind of like a magician's rings um, where they're not quite touching you want to make sure that they go all the way through and that it looks like chainmail one of the things that you would use this for is on a character that required chain mail or something like that and normally one of the ways you could do that is to use the cloth modifier however with high levels of geometry like this it can cause issues so blender 2.79 has a new feature called the surface deform modifier that we're going to show you how to use now so now we're going to go to object mode a to deselect we need to choose the plane that the rings are on. Easiest way is in the outliner here, plane 001. You'll know you have the right one because it's highlighted in yellow. Push your middle mouse wheel down, pull to the side, and choose your physics tab. We're then going to click cloth because we want to put a cloth simulator on there. Come down to cloth collision. Open that up and click self collision. Then you choose the cube and we need to put physics on that as well we're going to put collision on there then choose the bottom plane and we're also going to add a collision to that now we're going to hit the play button and you can see that your cloth simulator is working properly stop that take it back to zero now we're going to choose one set of rings and we're going to come to the wrench tab add modifier and in the deform surface deform then you come here to this orange box choose the orange box and you're going to hit the plane that you put the cloth simulation on come back here choose the other set of rings and repeat the same step add modifier deform surface deform choose the box plane zero zero one you have to hit bind after you do that and let me go back to this one and hit bind as well all right so we can push the play button now to make sure that our animation is working properly and as you can see it works fairly well so stop it bring it back to start then up in your my um, outliner here you're going to go to plane 001 click the i to hide the plane and then we're going to run it again and you'll be able to see it without a plane so if we stop it there and scroll around you can see that it has a fairly realistic effect on um, how the rings interact with each other there so you could put clothes on um, or chain mail on your character without using the cloth simulation um, however, using it gives you a more realistic fall to the way the fall, cl clothes fall on the body with the wrinkles and all of that. If you use the cloth simulation on just the chain mail and not on the plane, because of the high levels of geometry, it will cause your computer to run slow and animate slow and what have you. So because of the surface deform modifier, that gives you not only a realistic fall to the chain mail, but it also allows your animation, as we saw, to run very quickly, as you can see here. So that's it for the chainmail video. Um, I hope you find it useful. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I know I haven't posted anything in quite some time on uh, my YouTube channel here, but I have been doing things in the background with my husband, Alimayo, and... Um, we got some new computers and whatnot, so we're able to do a little bit more now power-wise than we were before. And hopefully we'll have some new and very cool stuff coming out because Blender continues to get better and better all the time, always adding new features. And when we find cool stuff like this, we like to share it with you guys. So if you like what you see and you want to see more, please click and subscribe. And anything that you might want to know about that we could help you with, let us know. Thanks. Have a good day.